Capital cities. Every country has one. A place for the government to work and for parliament to gather. A city where the embassies and the most important courts are located and where the monarch or president lives. Okay, it isn't always that simple. Sometimes the official capital is different from the actual capital. And sometimes a country has two capitals that divide the functions of government between them. However, there is only a single country on earth that divides their branches of government over more than two cities. The Constitution of South Africa does not name a capital city, but the President and his cabinet work from the city of Pretoria, where most embassies are also located. Meanwhile, Parliament meets in Cape Town, over 1,300 kilometers away. That's like if Capitol Hill, instead of being down the street from the White House, for some reason was located in Florida. That's a long drive, or more likely, a short plane journey. Finally, the Supreme Court of Appeal, the court capable of overruling all the local courts, is located in the city of Bloemfontein. To understand how this strange arrangement came to be, we must go back in time to the days of empire. The country now known as South Africa began in the 1600s as a Dutch East India Company trading post, located where the city of Cape Town is today. Over time, the area became home to a large number of Dutch former company workers, who decided to stay in the area with their families after their contracts ran out. These people who would become known as the Boers would settle the fertile lands in and around the Cape, fighting with and against local and migrating tribes for the best territory. In the early 1800s, during the Napoleonic Wars, the Cape Colony was taken by the British Empire. Many Boers who didn't want to live under British tyranny began migrating northeast, eventually setting up their own small countries. Two of these managed to stay alive for a significant amount of time. The South African Republic, better known as Transvaal, with its capital in Pretoria, and the Orange Free State, with its capital in Bloemfontein. In the 1880s, the Brits tried to bring them back under their dominion, but by using guerrilla tactics, the heavily outnumbered Boers forced the empire to back off. When they came back 20 years later, with even more overwhelming force, the Boers fought long and hard, but were eventually defeated. In 1910, the British consolidated most of their colonies in southern Africa, creating a self-ruling dominion out of the two former Boer republics, as well as the British colonies of the Cape and Natal. Unlike other dominions created out of former colonies, the Union of South Africa wouldn't be a federation, but a unitary state, meaning that the former self-ruling colonies and republics would lose large parts of their power to the central government. Since they didn't want to get on the Boers' bad side again, a compromise was struck. They would divide the government between what was now the provinces of the Union. So the Cape got the legislature, Transvaal got the administration, and the Orange Free State got the judiciary. By then, they had run out of branches, and poor Natal just got a wad of cash, and an apology instead. And so, South Africa's semi-official three capital cities were established. It could, however, be argued that today, South Africa actually has four capital cities. Johannesburg, located near Pretoria, is the country's largest city and the financial hub of Southern Africa. In 1994, when the government of Nelson Mandela got into power, they created a new court capable of overruling the Court of Appeals in Bloemfontein on constitutional matters, and placed it in Johannesburg, making the city the constitutional judiciary capital of South Africa.